22 year old G3 P2002. She's admitted in spontaneous labor at 39 weeks and two days. She began contracting about two hours ago and they've been getting stronger and more frequent. Her prenatal course is completely uncomplicated. She passed her glucola, her GPS was negative two weeks ago. She had two prior term spontaneous vaginal deliveries and her babies weighed six pounds, 10 ounces, and seven pounds, four ounces. On exam, she has normal vital signs. Her tracing is category one. She's contracting every three minutes on the her cervix is 78 centimeters, 90% effaced, and plus one station. Her membranes are still intact. On ultrasound, she has a singleton intrauterine pregnancy in the frank breach presentation with a flexed fetal head and a normal amniotic fluid index of 11.2 centimeters. to a c-section versus a breech vaginal delivery she would very much prefer a breech vaginal delivery she seems like a very good candidate for a breech vaginal delivery and she's already signed consents what do you think yeah sure why not Well, that was fun. We hope you enjoyed our action-packed intro to Breach Vaginal Deliveries. I'm Isha Vasudeva. And I'm Chris Morosky. In these next few scenes, we're going to review some maneuvers and techniques for performing breech vaginal delivery. One thing that I was taught as a resident is that when you're delivering a singleton baby from the frank or complete breech presentation is to have your back against the wall. What is that supposed to mean? What that tip is supposed to suggest is that you should have the patient do the majority of the pushing of the breech out and the delivering attendant should avoid any pulling or tugging. Let's take a look. The first opportunity to pull or tug too soon is when the breech is delivered and the legs are beginning to deliver. As you can see here, you don't want to reach up and pull on the legs too soon. This is too much traction. Rather, allow the patient to continue pushing until the legs have been delivered to just about the ankles. Then you can employ the Pinard maneuver by applying a small amount of pressure on the popliteal fossa and slightly externally rotating the leg. The legs will usually deliver easily with this. In order to prevent too much tension on the cord insertion site on the baby's abdomen, Following delivery of both legs, advance a small loop of cord. The infant will then be wrapped around the abdomen with a sterile dry towel. The next opportunity to pull or tug too soon is when the arms are being delivered. Here in these scenes, you can see that there is too much traction applied to the arms too soon. I very much recommend performing the love set maneuver to deliver the arms. With this, the patient continues to push while the delivering attendant gently rotates the baby. To deliver the right arm, the baby is rotated counterclockwise. To deliver the left arm, the infant is rotated clockwise. Once the elbow is presenting, it can be gently reduced externally to assist with delivery of the arm if needed.
When delivering the head, you want to avoid extension of the neck as much as possible. Do not pull up on the body to deliver the head as in these scenes. Extension of the neck causes a large diameter of the fetal head to present to the pelvic outlet. It is better to flex the head using the Morisol Smelly Bite Maneuver, which will present a smaller diameter of the fetal head to the pelvic outlet and make delivery with patient pushing possible. To perform the maneuver, the delivering attendant's index and middle fingers are swept across the fetal face and placed on each malar prominence. The infant's legs can be draped over the supporting arm. The body of the infant is lowered, while the other hand of the delivering attendant is placed over the shoulders and around the back of the neck for support. With pushing efforts, the flexed fetal head is delivered. Let's see that again from the other side in real time. Sometimes the fetal head does not deliver with these maneuvers. It is important to understand the techniques used to manage the entrapped fetal head. We'll review these techniques over the next couple of scenes. Similar to a shoulder dystocia, McRoberts positioning and suprapubic pressure can assist with delivery of the entrapped fetal head. Some experts recommend suprapubic pressure once the fetal head has reached the perineum for every breech vaginal delivery. Entrapment of the fetal head is an appropriate time to perform an episiotomy. Piper forceps are a very useful tool to address entrapment of the fetal head. As you can see, compared to the tucker mclean forceps, Piper forceps have a curved, separated shank and are overall very long. This allows them to be placed under the infant's body to the aftercoming fetal head. To place the Piper forceps, an assistant will elevate the infant's body. As the blades of the Piper forceps are small and have a small cephalic curve, they are easily placed around the fetal head and into the pelvis. The forceps are articulated and the delivery attendant will then lower the infant's body onto the shanks of the forceps. Delivery is accomplished with patient pushing, gentle countertraction, and slight elevation of the forceps as the head is delivered. For often smaller infants with the head entrapped behind the incompletely dilated cervix following delivery of the body, a Dursen incision can be performed. The cervix is cut with banded scissors at 2 o'clock, followed by 10 o'clock and 6 o'clock if needed. These locations will avoid laceration of the branches of the uterine arteries at 3 and 9 o'clock. These incisions will need to be repaired following delivery of the infant. With breech extraction, the delivering provider will reach into the uterus to grab a hold of both of the fetal feet and use them to extract the infant down to the legs. The maneuvers previously demonstrated can then be applied in an expedited fashion as compared to a singleton breech delivery. If only one foot can be identified, this can be delivered and held in place with one hand while the other hand can be replaced to identify and extract the other foot and leg. Again, the same maneuvers previously described can be used to deliver the rest of the baby. Thanks for watching our video on breech vaginal deliveries. We hope you find this review of vaginal breech delivery maneuvers and techniques helpful to your clinical practice of obstetrics.